Oh, guys. So, uh, recently, I realized when I suddenly checked Anki all of a sudden, I realized I was approaching onto a thousand days. So, I thought a thousand days seems like a decent round number. So, I'll try and make a video about just not so much like the pro progression and how my Korean's going and stuff, but more of just like um, stuff that I've learned um, while learning. It doesn't necessarily, it's not even. Uh, I think most of it is like language related or I'll try and put some language related stuff in there, but it's just like general stuff. So um, I just threw, threw together a few things I could think of. And um, so I'll show you the Anki stats first. Um, the stats on the left. So as you can see, so when I started Anki, it was um, effectively like the first day. So I've always classed like the time I started was the time I started Anki because I started... Um, um, I think I started some random deck that was on there, maybe a Vita deck, maybe something else, I don't know. But then, like, not soon after, I ordered the Talk To Me In Korean book, and I started inputting it in, and then I, started, I inputted, like, um, the other decks that I've got available. Um, so I started inputting them into Anki, and then it started getting larger around um, the first, like, 200, 300 days, because I was just repping those, and as you can see, it's gone down and down and down. And then I think around here, it's just been, like, since this point, I think I had some sentence cards, and um, now, like, the last, like, however long this is, like, 250 days or whatever, it's mostly just been um, me repping the Hanja deck and the, um, like, just a picture deck, my own picture deck. So, as we can see from here, um, a lot of the cards that I had have been deleted. So, in total, I have, like, 10,000 cards, and then... Um, New, I don't know if un, new is uh, un, unlearned, but there used to be a stat that was unlearned, like um, how many you've got like waiting, but they, for some reason they've removed that. So overall, really, I don't really have that many cards because um, before a long time ago, I had a, a every time I come across a word, I would make a sentence for it. But the thing is, I've deleted that deck, and that must have had like three thousand words in it. Because I could just I could never catch up to it, and then that was when I started. Like I was like, sentences are taking too long, and I'm just spending too much time. I'm never going to catch up to them, so I just stopped doing them. So I completely stopped sentences, and now I just do like picture cards for for things that I can find a picture for, whether it's an action and like a gift for a verb, or even a, even a, just a, a, an image for a, a verb or an adjective or something like that. So, um, effectively. Um, that's all I've been doing now for like the last like six months or whatever, 250 days, however long this is, I don't know. I don't know the exact time frames. But um, you can analyse the stats there if you want to pause the video. So that's about it. So uh, the first thing that I would like to say is um, I figured out like there is not one way to learn language. There is maybe there is some better ways to do it or like um, some specific... Like if, if you want to, like, we, we, people say, like, immersion and input and everything is, like, the way to learn. But to be honest, if if you don't enjoy doing certain activities, you should not do certain activities. So if you, if you don't want to talk to people, you shouldn't talk to people. There are other ways through writing and, like, even talking to yourself and other stuff that you can use to get practice in for other things. So if you don't like reading... There are other things you can do, such as playing games or like reading articles and stuff, stuff that something that's going to keep you engaged. So there is something that you do. What you want to do is you want to kind of replicate your native language. Like all right, so in English, like we can find or like there, there are web novels in Korean that aren't translated into English. And for me, that that's what I like. I like to do things that aren't aren't in English or I was already doing so playing video games like playing video games in Korean is very easy when they have the like Korean so you just put it in and, and you can play so it's like a way to replace your activity to keep you engaged with the language so the way that I like to learn languages by I personally think I don't know why that's so high so I personally think that reading is the best way to build up um like just vocabulary and grammar and everything. It's, it's just the quickest way because you can cover so much more content and it's you can always search stuff whereas when you're listening um if you don't have the transcript you, you like you got no choice like you just have to let it wash over you so um i've done a lot of listening to podcasts and a lot of listening like a lot of watching of tv shows and i i don't think it's 
as effective for learning specifically but I do think it's good for just listening to the language and it's good for like um hearing what you've learned so when you learn something and then you hear it like five times in a tv show you you kind of just remember it for a long time until you unless it just never comes up ever again which is it doesn't really matter so what, what i tend to do is read like I, personally i find reading is the the number one priority so as long as i get my reading done i don't really care and then after that uh i will watch a tv show so i sp- stick to Personally, I stick to sitcoms and like I just stick to sitcoms and then the transfer is like it does transfer to other other content and also other content tran- like the reading transfers to even though what what I mainly read is like fantasy content um it still transfers over because the base of the language is always the same. So to build up your base, you just find something that is uh, of your interest and then like if you want to play you could play Pokemon like you could play through every single Pokemon game. It's not like a specific, maybe it's like a slightly fantasy genre, but that is like the Pokemon domain. And then you build up your um, language ability because the base language ability is the same in every single domain. But the main difference between choosing a domain is that the the size of the vocabulary and the range of the vocabulary used and even maybe um, like the made up, the amount of made up vocabulary. So if your domain is Pokemon or whatever, say just say Pokemon for an example, that that's going to include like all the moves, all the Pokemon's names and stuff, which probably has very little crossover unless somebody suddenly starts talking about Pokemon or you browse Pokemon forums and talk about Pokemon on the Pokemon forums and stuff like that. Like the, this is something you could do to build up your base in the language because when I was growing up, like it was just everything like the TV's on, people are talking, I'm going to play this game. Like a lot of the, a lot of words that I learned, I learned solely through Pokemon in the first place or like even other games like you would just see a word like oh what does that mean like no you couldn't really search things up back then maybe you ask someone what it means or you just hear it so many times in so many contexts that you just guess what it means so this is the way that i like to learn languages and um that's what i'm going to try and replicate that into italian where i'll i will watch the sitcoms and i will read read books read some i've got the ollie richard's greatest reader that i've actually read but i would probably read them again when i like completely start like once i've got to a certain level in korean i'll start italian and i'm going to replicate pretty much the same thing um i think the 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 literary side so most of the books will probably be like classic books and stuff like that rather than um like fantasy web novels in the case that i can do with korean because there's so many of them it's so easy to just like it's pretty much impossible that you'll ever finish them it's like if you just try to watch YouTube content, you're never gonna catch up with YouTube content, and that's perfectly a, a perfectly viable way to learn. Is it, you just choose what you want to do, and if that includes like if you want to speak, you just just go and speak like, and then your input will be what people are saying to you, and then you can improve that way. But personally, I I, I personally think that that is not my style because what, if I I don't really want to talk to people, like I don't really care about talking to people because, um. I don't want to, I've done it enough in English of like, when you greet someone, it's like, oh, how, 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 are, how are you, how's the weather, oh, where do you live, what do you do, and all that, I don't want to do that conversation over and over and over and over again, which it's, it's, I think people who are younger, they like to do that, like, when I was younger, I would like to do that as well, and I would just like, like to talk to people and like, get new experiences, but when you hit a certain age, you just, like, the small talk and the conversation starting of like, talking to a new person i don't care about that whenever i meet a new person now generally i just tend to like find out if we have something in common and then like we just talk about that and then that's when you start adding other stuff in like oh i used to do this and i used to do that and, that. and it's just like a different style of conversation so i feel like like if i want to talk to people i need i would rather just like go on forums or youtube comments or something like that but i would rather probably begin with um writing more than speaking like I, for some reason i just don't care about it I think that if I go to Korea, that's when I'll start probably like practicing just before I go or even when I go there. So this section has been quite long. Um, but that's what I wanted to cover. I just wanted to cover that there is no like one specific way. Um, and But I've learned the way that I like to learn. Like even when I first started Italian a long, long time ago, what I would do is I would literally like, I didn't do it for very long. I think it was less, it's definitely less than a month. But I would like sit there with the radio on because that was what I wanted to listen to. Like, I just naturally thought that that would be like the best way. But obviously, because I didn't build up or like actively learn 
vocab, like the bass vocab, that kind of sent me back. Otherwise, I think I actually would have probably got somewhere in doing that that technique in that method where I would just listen to the radio. Like I, I didn't do it a lot, but if I listened to it more, like five hours a day or something, and then I, I built on my vocab and then I started reading some like stories online or talking to people online or even playing games, like I would have built up uh, more of a habit through reading. I would have built a better vocabulary through reading and I would have continued to do the listening part of the news, which is um, uses a lot of similar to English words anyway. So it would have just been like bridging the gaps between all the connective, uh, connective words and adverbs and all that. So the next one, um, the importance of language distance. So I, I didn't really, before I started learning like um, Korean, I didn't really understand like like the the reason like behind oh, oh okay this is a distant language uh, like people people would usually just say like the grammar but really the the main difference between well i suppose you can say the grammar because the words are in a specific order and it's like this this western way of ordering things like a western because all the language we have to think um i hope this doesn't keep going too loud but um all the languages so when you think about it all the languages that are like from a, a root language and they just like evolve down so um it's ha like romance languages and germanic languages were all like similar languages like years and years ago it was basically the same language and that's why the word order and stuff is um sorry so that's why the word order and stuff is so similar because they were literally the same language before or they, they were affected so much by one language like latin affected like tons of languages so a lot of the word order and everything stays the same. Um, hopefully this sounds better now. Um, so as we can see, like even just having um, the the same script, like even even on a base level, having the same script is such a help because you can automatically, like once if you come into Italian, you can automatically read it because you already know the Latin script. Whereas if you come into something like Korean, Chinese, Japanese, um, even something like Greek and Russian come from like an ancestor, like the same ancestor. And so I think a lot of Latin characters come from um, Greek characters as well. And then the Greek characters came from like um, Phoenicia or so. Um, and then, so it's, it's like all the same ancestor, even though the script is slightly different, it's similar enough. Whereas this Korean, like Hangul was invented, like literally invented, like, okay, we're just gonna do like this and this and this and this based on like mouth shapes. Like it's it's one of the most like crazy scripts ever, but you still have to. It's still a barrier to entry, and then behind, hidden behind the hangul is like a hanja. Like the Chinese characters are hidden behind, um, like the hangul itself. So, like even the barrier to entry is like um way higher. So these are, these are two scripts from um. If you can read both of these, or even if you can only read Korean, or if you can only read the Italian one, what you can see in the Italian one is. Um, the vocabulary so drago and then like grande we all everyone knows grande and then you got froce and then th like these words like you can guess the meaning of like most of them like even if you don't know like oh viva in una torre yeah like you don't if you don't know like this you, it doesn't matter because you still have the base of the thing and then you've got things like villaggio like this is like it's basically yeah, just an English word, but it's, it's the same. It's the same origin of the word, so you already have the advantage. Whereas when when you've got like words like tabaninin, pangimani, sasa, so it's like how many of those words are in English? Like zero. Even if you're coming from Japanese, the only thing that you really get like is perhaps like yong is gonna be something like uh, close to that, like yin or yong or something like that. Like it'll pretty much be the same word because it comes from a Chinese character, and then there's a slight variation. It's almost the same. Like the Chinese characters are almost the same as just being a Latin word. Whereas like the pronunciation might just be a, a bit different and you can somewhat guess it. Like once you know the rules and the difference, like you can somewhat guess the, the difference in the words. So that's the main difference of like language distance is vocabulary. I, I would say grammar in a sense, but I don't think that the grammar is as big as the vocabulary because when you start with italian maybe i don't maybe you know like 30 percent of the words 40 percent of the words like are not you don't know them but they're familiar in like structure and like the, the sound is more familiar than what it would be if like like 
we don't really have words like ga, like you don't have characters like that in English or Italian, like ga, or, and then, okay, or they say like cafe, like uh, cafe is like cape, is, which is the original pronunciation probably taken from Italian, but now it's like cape, cape, like, so, um, what was I saying? So the vocabulary is the main thing. So you're basically, when you start Korean, you're starting with like zero vocabulary and you have to build that vocabulary up um, from zero. And then personally, I, I I don't even think that the, the word order and um, verbs conjugate at the end, that is not a problem because there, there's only a, like a, a finite amount that it can do that. And even Italian, even though the, the verbs are conjugating and like a lot of the verbs, verbs come from nouns the same as Korean, a lot of the verbs turn into nouns. It doesn't matter because you can just learn that and it's like, it's so much easier to learn than it is to learn an entire like subset of words that you don't know. And especially the thing is, if you come from Chinese, it's like you have like half the words in Korean as well because you you already know. And then some, there's like mixed Hanja texts as well. So you know every single word. And then when you look in the dictionary, it has the Chinese characters next to it. So you, it's, it's a lot easier to learn. And it's just in a similar sense, like speciale is like, we, how easy is that to learn? It just sounds a bit different. It, it's literally written exactly the same with an E on the end, as special. Like, so that's the, the importance of language. This is what I've learned about language distance because I wasn't completely aware. I wasn't completely aware of the difference. I just heard that it was a difference. And then because when you are monolingual, every language just sounds foreign to you. And like, um, it, it, it basically, all, it's all foreign because you don't, it's like you don't have the knowledge that things are close or things are distant. So, um, next one, the efficacy of, uh, efficacy of SRS. So, the main thing for SSS, uh, SRS, and the reason that medical students use it so much is it, it, it's good for short-term memory. And because when you go into, like, long-term memory, if you, the only reason you remember, um, like, vocabulary in long say you've learned it in Anki and then the only reason you remember it in the long term is because it's come up before in different uh, like areas it's come up in your listening or it's come up in your reading because if you solely used um this for long term it just it just doesn't work like even if you say like oh yeah I don't know that I don't know that every time it comes up just the way that it works is like it, it it's not there for you to remember it but it is there the SRS is there to get you started to a point it's there to rep the words just like the reason i put the italian one here is because the i haven't actually started this and, but if you go through these words uh, and like immerse at the same time you start seeing the word like it's, it's like just to show your brain that these words exist and to start noticing them start like repping them in the in the input so this is the reason for SRS for me. And then also the Korean ones are very simple, like sentences, like very simple sentences, very simple grammar. And you don't need explanation. This is my card is just like that. Like it's so simple. And the picture is nice. I think the picture helps with the comprehension a bit. But just having a simple sentence like that can help you understand the language, like start understanding the language in smaller chunks than it would like trying to find the perfect reading content or the perfect listening content. Like it's much easier to just uh, take it from some kind of um, grammar book or something and just take out the, the simple sentences that will make it easier to build up your base in the language. And then another thing that I use it for is um, like rarer words. Uh, if there are any rarer words that you want to remember or I just use it for the pictures. Like when you start spending too much time on Anki, like when you start spending time on Anki, you start to realise after like especially a thousand days you start realizing that it, it's not even worth it like you're better off just using your time reading and watching because you become so proficient at the language that it's easy it, you're more likely to gain more out of just watching and reading but i still keep the pictures in there because it still keeps me like learn some words that probably are like less less often to come up so if, if it's a rarer word um it's pretty good for the SRS because it's a way of deliberately showing yourself that word. So um, the mainstream advice isn't the most effective, efficient. So um, when I say this, it's because um, when you go on like any kind of like subreddit for language learning or any kinds of forums, they always like say the weirdest things and like eh, you could even say this about refold to be honest, but it's just like people who haven't um, 
people who haven't actually done the thing are the ones parroting the advice. So it's like, this is why when you, like, I wouldn't even say listen to me. What you want to do is go on YouTube and you want to listen to someone who has got to the level you want to be. And now the reason that 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 in itself doesn't actually work at the same time, because the person could have done that over 10 years when a different method um, could have taken like two years, three years, four years and not 10. So this is why you have to like look at many, many different people who have done like got very far in languages. Even if it's not the same language, the method is still almost the same. It's like um, Luca says he couldn't learn Japanese because of his specific method, which is a fault in the, not the method itself, but it's like, it's just the, the languages that he has learned. He could use that method, the translation method, because they were so similar. Whereas things like Japanese, which like Matt versus Japanese and Dogen have got like the highest levels in, like these languages, they're just, it's, it's like a shortcut to do the immersion. Because if you're just constantly translated, the languages are too different for you to just not have an intuitive like you would it would take you like half an hour just to like have a conversation that would take like five minutes and i've seen people do that i've seen people trying to do the output method for korean for japanese and it does not work because you don't have the base of vocabulary to like make up things like if you're learning spanish or something you can just make up a word and like just say a word that's close to english that you might think is the answer to the word that you're searching for and chances are it it likely is because you've it's a similar enough word in english that you can just guess whereas when it's like korean japanese chinese you, you don't know the word you, you've got zero words to go you've got nothing to say if you don't know the word or any kind of word that means what you're trying to say you, you can't say it's impossible to say this is why the input method works better for more distant languages but people still go on the forums are korean other forums and um, quora all this and they just say this the, the stuff that would work for these other like similar similar languages it, it works because it because it doesn't take as long everything works so and then the, the people who have succeeded in two three years at having basic conversations in french or something these people oh yeah it works and then somebody parrots that that um doesn't even know that they're, they're like just starting themselves and then you go on these forums and whatever and you'll see people just parrying things that they haven't done it's like oh oh yeah i'm a beginner i'm a beginner but this 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 works like only listen to people that have done what you want to do even if even if it took them longer to do just listen to them because they have got where you want to go and then if you have a brain you start thinking like hmm maybe you start doing that and then you're like oh this isn't this is not the best way like there must be a better way and then you start looking around at other people and then you find that that there is almost i'm I almost guaranteed there is a youtuber for every single type of method like whether it's like just solely like reading and writing translating anything like speak speaking and taking what you've been given and then trying to use that and then trying to build your knowledge from receiving input from other people like in some conversational way like there or there, there is people who have done conversational stuff and failed and said like oh, okay this is not the way immersion is the way and there are people who have done immersion and like oh no you need to have conversations like a lot because you just can't express what you want to express without trying to do it in the first place and realizing the gaps so there is literally some there is a youtuber or a blog or something for for every type of method and you need to find these people and then like the the way that they suit your your mentality you need it's like video game reviews or movie reviews if the person reviewing the product it has the same taste of you then the review is going to make sense like if you like lord of the rings and someone says or oh, I, I don't really like lord of the rings so this fancy movie is crap. So, like, you know, why would you listen to somebody that doesn't have the same taste as you? Like, let's take Donkey. Donkey says he doesn't he doesn't like um, turn based strategy games or turn based games, turn based JRPGs and all this. Why would I listen to him about uh, a turn based JRPG when I like turn based JRPG? It's like you have to find the person that has your taste. So, um, that's basically it. So the ma the mainstream of I don't know how it's become mainstream advice that like some of these specific ways that people have never tried or haven't even succeeded with have become the the norm like i'm glad that the refold and a lot of youtubers there's a lot of big youtubers like luke truman and uh days of french and swedish uh lamont like that have they're trying to put out like input 
content like oh you should get input and then oh I, this is what i'm doing and then they are having success and then they can show people whereas the the main big ones are usually people who like aren't very good they're not very good and they've been doing it a long time it's like because you don't know they're not very good you presume oh, oh he's speaking this language like you they could be speaking a completely different language or maybe they're speaking it but you don't know if they're bad because you don't know enough grammar or you don't know enough even about the pronunciation rules or something like that like you just don't know enough so this is the like one of the biggest problems in the language learning community i think and it probably spreads over to like every community it's i'm pretty sure it, it, there's just like the mainstream advice like dieting the mainstream advice is absolutely terrible even though the advice is there people just don't want to listen so um for korean specifically the time to reward ratio is abysmal like actually abysmal you could learn like coding like multiple coding languages in the same time that you could learn to like fluently speak korean very very well because anyone that spent like two years on it they're either going to be good at reading good at speaking or like they will only be good at one of them like you will never be good at both after two years time like it's just impossible like the, there, there is like a limit to how much you can know within that time within such a distant language so the time to reward ratio the picture is a bit random um so the time to reward ratio is it's just it's not very good like i it's it's almost the reason like i couldn't tell people like oh yeah you should learn korean learn japanese like no nah, you know what you should do you should learn something that is like going to in, improve your life like okay if if these two languages or oh, well, these two like, if if if, the, if any language improves your life then it's probably worth learning to you but even so the, the you could be spending that time doing anything else like okay maybe if it's just like a side hobby it's fine like but you the thing is you're not going to make progress doing two hours a day on a distant language it's just not going to happen like yeah you, you can do two hours a day you can do half an hour a day on french or whatever and eventually in like three four years you might be somewhat good but like korean japanese arabic all these all these distant languages you're never going to get far like the reward is not that like do not do it for the reward but like do it to live the reward if you if hopefully that makes sense so you want to do it to like doing it is the reward kind of thing like it's like it is it's its own hobby it's like a hobby you can't use it it's like like if you want to get a job in korean um you need to start like five years ago because you won't be as good as, you won't be good until like five years time like five years time is when you will be like top dog like especially if you're doing if you've got a good method like most of these people like who are like even the teachers and the people who are like good on youtube they've been doing it a very long time and they are not good they are just okay like okay at the language like that's all i want to say i'm not going to say any names because i don't want to get in trouble but a lot of the people you think are good and are, are like they just repeat the same things over and over and over again and then maybe that's even its own thing but i didn't put it on here is that most of speaking is just talking the same thing over and over again and what you'll notice is it's not just the grammar it's like they just keep saying the same phrases or they say very simple things and it gives you the illusion that they are fluent or um maybe maybe it's hard to express every single thing that you know but it it no one seems to like attempt to prove how much they actually know or anything like that like taking the test like oh, okay maybe you can pass the, te the the top test but it's not exactly like the highest grade or anything and then it's not like you show yourself like watching a specific tv show or like explaining something from a specific tv show tv show like just naturally like 100 percent, you understand every single thing like these are like people who have been learning for 10 years 20 years like obviously you don't need to prove you don't need to prove that to, you don't need to prove anything to anyone but at some point like you still have to keep going to improve to a certain point and not just stay mediocre just because you've been doing it 10 years you're better than everyone else because everyone else quits like that's it that's it really so the time to reward is not worth it and you better if, if you don't have a job spend time doing something that's going to help you to get a job and then and then do like the thing afterwards and like focus energy into something else into some kind of study or some kind of um develop developing or anything that you can do in your spare time that's going to help you get close to a job do that instead of language learning because well i say instead but focus that instead of language learning and then focus and then just do the language learning on the side if you definitely want to do because the time to reward is not worth it and if you wanted to be a translator you needed to start back in high school because you probably won't 
get to the point that you need to be for the job uh, for another like four or five years anyway. So another thing I've learned is how to notice things. So the main thing is like um, for Korean, it's like hanja, but this is like hanja or like similar words. And obviously like this has come from just trying to understand, I suppose, decoding like conjugations. Like it doesn't take very long to decode a conjugation. You can instantly tell what the word is supposed to be, except in a few that seem similar. But this has come over to other languages where like um I didn't realize that empire and imperial were even related. Like, I don't know why. I don't, they just sounded different. Um, I didn't even connect them in my head. I'm not sure why. But things like this, like, I, I was always good. I've always been good at things like, um, like Greek roots for like uh, medical stuff and uh, science stuff, like uh, Latin roots, Greek roots for science stuff. But I don't know why. It's, some things just like, it just overlooked it. But now I, I just feel like, I have like this extra sense of awareness of the English language. Like, so even if I quit Korean, I would still have this same awareness of the, like the language, like the, the way the language is presented. So, um, this is something that I've learned is just like the ability to notice things. And it's almost like, um, it's just like gone into everything. Like if like small, I feel like I just notice smaller details more in, in everything. Like, not just language or anything like that. You just, that's crossed over into anything. So, I presume that's come from, like, just trying to decode a language. Just trying to decode all the conjugations and doing it very quickly anyway. It's like, um, it just, it's just passed over into everything else. So, um, you always wish that you started earlier. And uh, this, this goes back to stuff I've been saying already. But, like, you always, like, no matter, the thing, I feel like this is anything that you get good at, you will always like like it's like even if you started in high school you'd be like oh, i wish i did this when i was like 10 or something like every single thing you do in your life that is good or wields a good outcome or you feel good about doing um that is like um you you will always wish that you started early you always it's like people's like oh, i wish like i grew up learning this language maybe usually it's like a heritage language but like you just always wish that you did it because you feel it's like you know that you're gonna get good but you just know that it's going to take time. And when you know something's going to take time, it makes you wish that you had already been doing it in the past. So it's a very simple one. And that's about it. So another thing I learned is like how, let's say how memory works. So memory is like strongly, strongly, strongly associated with um, mainly like repetition. But on top of repetition, um, we have things that like affect our, our memory like deeper like you can have things like smells like visuals like all this on top of um like if you, if you walk somewhere so say you, i almost guarantee you yeah that you can remember your walk to school and then not only that you can remember certain parts of like maybe things that you did on the way to school like just a random a random day like oh, i remember doing this on the way to school because the memory of the the path is so deep that it then connects to the other memories of like everything that happened. So if you smell like something on the path, there are chances that you probably still be able to remember that because the strong, the memory of just walking the same path every day is so strong that like you remember, like your memory can strongly connect the other memories towards that. So it's like, it strengthens the memories around it. It's like when you learn a new Korean word and it has hanja, in, like say it's a hanja, uh, a Chinese word and it has hanja, and then you see another word and you're like, oh, I've seen this, this hanja before. You know that. And then uh, the, the whole point of, um, let's say, input is that it's not just the context that you get, but it's like the different like experiences. It's like almost like experiences of a word. So every time you see a sentence and it's like a different sentence or even the same sentence in a different setting, say, say you read a sentence and then you watch something and saw the same sentence, it's like you get like a double memory of that. So you get like two instances of that exact same sentence in your head and you've got maybe visuals or maybe audio or maybe like something else. So you, the way to make your memory deeper is to have uh, like get stronger connections and have multiple connections. So you have multiple connections, you have the sounds um the like your surroundings maybe if you're listening to a podcast like and you're walking outside maybe you can re remember that sentence by walking that exact same route you can remember what you were listening to like before so so memories connect in like crazy ways and also 
is it's um doing like repetition is a very strong um factor in memory so if you it's like if you walk the same route you will remember that route and then if you see the same word over a long period of time if you looked at the same word every single day you would probably be able to remember that word like for another year probably and it's even even the whole point of space repetition is that you see the word often but at uh interval like uh progressing intervals so that the memory gets stronger so when you see something uh so if you looked at something every week so you looked at a word like once a week your memory would be just as strong of that word if you looked at it every single day even though you're probably looking at what like um probably like four times more like 52 365 um more than four maybe like six or something like that or seven seven times more even though you're looking at seven times more the memory will probably just be as strong because you need to progressively see things and progressively hear things um in in a progressive time time frame and this is why that um having you have the advantage of learning a language if say you watched like korean dramas for like 10 years watched anime for like 10 years before learning you like all that stuff is still in your head but it's like just the time it takes to make these words and phrases and everything like so deeply set like it's why it, it still takes it's why even even closely related language still take a long time because you still everything needs to be deep in your memory like deep like you've heard it a long time ago you've seen it a long time ago anything like that it just helps your memory like everything helps your memory repetition sounds all that so that's basically how memory works and it, it's natural to forget even things that you see often like it's natural to forget because to make the a memory deeper as well you have to understand like when it comes to like language you have to understand like if you don't understand maybe you have, you have if a weaker memory say when i'm reading a book while i'm reading it i can visualize what's happening but before i could visualize what was happening it it was so much harder to like remember where i'd seen a word or remember even i couldn't remember what happened like a lot of the time because the the words were just they just weren't they're not deep and this is why i think close languages when the the sounds are even just like similar words it just gets it just penetrates deeper into your soul like the the language just penetrates deeper like if you listen to spanish or italian or german it's so much easier to just like like it just hits you harder than listening to chinese or arabic where you, you just don't have a clue you don't have any any word you've got nothing to like nothing's going into you it's all just flying past your head you have like no connection it's, the connection isn't strong enough to leave a lasting impact so i think that you could you could probably listen to arabic all day and then go to the next day and not remember a single thing because it's just so not deep and then if you did the same thing with like german or swedish or spanish or something you would probably remember like a few people like, oh yeah i remember that i was i heard that yesterday because it's just close enough to like get deeper into your memory so um the last one i think everyone who is good at something has been has spent a long time doing it so anyone who so when you were like 14 like 13 whatever when you're in school and you go do like p or something and then some people are better than others there's a, there is a reason people are better than other people so i remember one guy this one guy at school was really good at badminton and then he was like oh yeah i've been playing badminton for ages and then it's like anyone who is good at something like oh, if someone's good at something they've probably done it quite a lot like i'm not saying there isn't talent but talent is talent is like secondary secondary to like experience so experience is going to get you everywhere so if you anyone who's good at a language has definitely been doing it a long time natives who are good at language are usually like 14 15 and then a lot of them aren't good but some of them are very good um, and they've been doing it a very long time obviously it's not like their main focus in life and you're still developing and trying to understand the world and stuff but it, it crosses over into a lot of things so anyone who has done anything for a, a long period of time all these people who have done like escape artist stuff and like tv editing all this stuff is they've been doing it for a long time and if they haven't been doing it for a long time it's very easy to tell and when someone isn't good at singing when you know when these people come out of singing like oh I'm, I'm good at singing you uh the first thing they say like like oh, oh i didn't everyone says i was good at singing it's because they the reason people know you're good at singing is because 
you've been singing a long time, like you've been singing probably your whole life, but you just didn't know you were good or you just like, no, you'd never compared to anyone else or no one had ever told you to like try some competition or something. Like you've probably been singing to yourself in the shower and stuff like that anyway. So there, there is talent maybe, maybe there is talent. I don't know. Maybe how, do, how would we ever prove there is talent unless somebody made a completely new task uh, that no one has ever done no one has ever seen or done this task and then they got 100 people to do that task because the thing is like you can get good at something just by watching it as well so even if you watch something a lot i'm not saying good but like that's part of the like talent that we we have so like people say you say you grow up listening to spanish and then you go into spanish classes like oh oh yeah i'm pretty good and they're like oh oh this guy's really good at languages like oh he's, he's a natural no 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 He's just been listening to Spanish like from his grandparents at home for like the last 10 years anyway. So it, it, there's always something that's there. Like um, I remember there was someone in school who was really good at like um, arithmetic, like um, sums. Uh, and he, he was like really quick, like ridiculously quick. And he even admitted that he's like sometimes he does it at home. Like the thing is, when something happens inside someone's head, you have no way of seeing that. Like you can't see what happens. You can't see the football manager to be the fourteen-year-old who's planning out all these different like strategies and everything. He's playing games in his head. He's playing football games in his head that you can't see that. You can't judge that. So that when he goes on to, oh, I'm gonna gonna try and do the the thing. I'm gonna try and be a football manager. And then he's like a really good. At it. He's not natural. He's just done it in his head. Like like obviously, it just applies to everything. It, ba- it basically applies to everything except stupid things like eating or something like that like walking even people who even people who have like good posture have been using good posture for a long time because it's very hard to keep something like that up and you just have to become used to it's like exercise you gotta start from no somewhere but anyone with a good body or lifting a lot of weight has been doing it a long time because you don't get good like you don't get a really good body you don't get really strong in like a month going to the gym doesn't happen so that's just one thing i wanted to bring up so thank you for watching um it's been a fairly long video hopefully you stuck around um uh hopefully that's everything um i'm gonna write an article as well maybe there'll be different things in there i'm not sure but this is everything this is everything i could think of at the time so um thank you for watching and that's everything